Okay, so I spent a little bit of time studying this uh, current voltage relationship chart for 6v6 uh, that someone was kind enough to send me. And on that chart, when you get up around the B plus of uh, or plate voltage of around, say, 420, 430, 440, then you should be looking at a current of around 17 milliamps. So with these two tubes at the voltage I was operating them at, we were getting 8 for, uh, milliamps for one of them, 13 for the other, both below the 17. When I raised the voltage up, the uh, uh, 120 volt supply to the unit from wherever it was, I don't know, about 100 volts to maybe 110, I really don't know. Uh, probably less, probably more like from 80 to 100 volts. I should have made a note of that. The uh, tube currents became 24 milliamps and 20 milliamps, well over the 17. And I haven't yet, you know, and that's not without uh, putting full power onto it, 120 volts, a lot of line voltage. So that's a bit worrisome. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the cathodes. Um, I happen to have handy enough a couple more resistors and maybe then I'll be in a position where I can put full uh, full power onto the amp so I'm just going to add these in there. gee I wonder what the power rating of this board is and now I know somebody's going to tell me <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing in these videos. Yeah, listen, um, I'm pretty busy making the videos right now and I'm falling behind on reading the comments. I'm, I'm doing my best on them, but I know I'm not reading them all and I'm not responding to, uh, to many at all. So I apologize for that, but uh, I will get to them uh, at some point. So there we are. So this is now 1,350 ohms. That's a pretty large. Oh, better move these. Make sure the bypass capacitors are across the whole thing. Okay, I think we're just about ready for another test. Okay, we're back on DC here. DC here. Speaker connected. And I have an input. Uh, although the volume's down, I do have an input signal to it. There we go. And we're starting with one light bulb in the circuit. There's the B plus. There's the plate current. You know what, from now on I'm going to be scared to turn on an amplifier without having a meter in the plate circuit. <laughs> now I just really it's really apparent to me now that you can't really know what's going on with the tube um, without doing this, this kind of stuff. Wow, I gotta wonder how many uh, how many times I've missed something like this. You know and this all started not by measuring these currents, but by taking my uh, electronic thermometer and measuring the tubes tube temperatures. So, okay, so it looks like we stabilized out this time 11.3 and 7.7 .7 before it was 8.3 and 13.5. So why it would be a little bit lower right now is an interesting question for which I have no answer. Oh, what am I saying? Of course I have an answer. <laughs> Electro resistance in the uh, cathode circuit. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw in the other light bulb there and uh, we'll apply more voltage. Keep your eye on this meter up here. You should start seeing... Uh, here we go. So this is actually quite a large jump. Oh, we should also keep an eye on this one. Keep an eye on everything. Everybody keep an eye on everything. So we're over 17 here. Now we're up at 400 volts. I'm still supplying less than 100 volts to this amp. In my shop, it's often 125 volts. So if I put it on full power, that's, that's what this would get. You have John Waters, who has a very campy take on Christmas music. Um, one of the other people you speak to is Bill Adler, who makes a joke about the fact that he's a Jewish guy who's really into Christmas music. So, oh, Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, for the sake of a test here, I'm going to put this up onto full uh, voltage. I'm going to make a quick reading of everything and then shut it off. Uh, the twos are still... A little cool so let's try that now I'm on the 1500 volt scale right on 400 volts <clears throat> are we ready five hundred volts twenty seven twenty two okay, shut it right off five hundred volts twenty seven twenty two quick write that down 500 volts, 27, 22. Well, the chart I was studying uh, doesn't even go up to 500. <clears throat> the maximum rating, according to my RCA manual for these tubes, is 315. Uh, according to the manual, you can operate. You can operate them at 315. But you know, 500 is a long ways from 315. Wow! This is like a tube eating amplifier here. Well, I had to go away and think about all this some more. <clears throat> I hadn't quite ended up where I hoped to end up. I guess I can just keep driving up the, uh, you know, keep driving up the cathode resistors higher and higher. There must be some some crazy limit to this. You know, it doesn't make sense. I think 500 is just too much for these tubes. Uh, maybe there's some way to cut it down. Put some resistors into the plate circuit. Uh, you know, all that's going to take away the, you know, the major punch that this amp must have. Gee, I would have liked to have seen this thing in complete use with a guitar and a big speaker. It might make me feel a little more reassured here. Then. Or has something caused that voltage to go high coming out of the transformer? I just have a lot of trouble believing that. Oh well. Guess I'll go think about it. Okay, so I've thought about the situation a bit. I hunted around and found I had a box of 200 ohm 5 watt resistors. So I've made up these two circuits here, which is just three of these in series, three more in series, and I put them in series with these two, so the total now is around 2K, about 2,000 ohms. So first thing I'm going to do is just check it with my own meter, or right here. So I could have easily, uh, I could easily have an open circuit in this. Expecting 
2000. Sixty six hundred, which is what I think this is. So that's good. And the other one. So that should be one of the resistors. 600. Oh, that's not, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try it again. This ought to be the whole thing. So I should see 2,000 here. There we are. 196. And the other one, right here. 196, exactly the same. <clears throat> So all I've really done here is just hooked up a, uh, two 2,000 ohm cathode resistors here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's put this back before I forget this. There we are. I think we're all set. This should allow the 6v6 tubes to run safely at 500 volts. Let's see. Okay, back down to one light bulb. And, uh, just making a quick check of the circuit here. come up. Oh, only if I turn it on. So here comes the current here. Pretty low. Let's uh, let's hear this. Nice. 
Scotland in terms of producing lava in the last couple hundred years. Boy, now, it doesn't sound like your typical volcano, a chain of craters, because usually we think of things like Mount St. Helens. Well, I think I could blast the basement with that pretty good. I don't see that. Uh... Oh, I shouldn't do that. Oh, 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 shame on me. A little late at night for me to be doing that. So, okay. We won't uh, blast the stereo again, or blast the amplifier again. Let's go up another step now in voltage. Remember, we don't want to go over 17. Now, voltage over here is 430 on it. Uh, voltage being applied to the amplifier is just under a hundred volts. Power voltage. A little bit of a hum coming out of the speaker. Uh, Turned up a little bit. There was. There was an amazing guy named John Steinbrenson, and we call him Pastor John because okay. Let's just. I'm just gonna. Undo one of the light bulbs. Drop the supply voltage. These currents will drop. And hear what happens with the output. Here we go. I'd say there was a slight loss in volume. Let's put it back up again. Yeah, it's hard to perceive when, it's, when, when the change is that slow, just listening to it. I need to put instruments on it. But it's not like it uh, went distorted or anything like that. So. We gotta put full power on this thing and see what happens. I'm get my pencil ready. Okay, we're at about 4:30 right now. So 430 volts. 16. 13.8. So here we go. I'm going to put 100 and whatever, whatever this meter comes up to, 120, 125 volts on it. And 530, 21.4, 17.8. And in Germany and France, and nobody really knew what it was. And all the naturalists at the time were looking at it saying, hey, what is this thing? Why, for months on yeah, end, we're drop it. are drop the, the plants voltage way back to the you know, What is this thing that is making us cough, supply. that is bringing people to be sick? And they finally realized, a number of scholars put this forward independently, but most famously, Ben Franklin, they finally realized that what they were seeing was a haze from the volcano that had erupted in Iceland. And that far away island in, in the North Atlantic, something had rolled across the countryside and it was killing their plants, it was making them sick, and it was probably even altering their weather. Well, what was the scale of this cloud that was coming out of Lockheed? It spread all the way across the North Atlantic, so basically, the winds were just right. So just like in 10, 2010, when the winds were happened to be right to carry that three. ash, from AFB at Leopold across Seven, and just get in everybody's way eight, who was five. trying to fly across Europe. The winds were just right in the summer of 1783 to carry this incredible fog, this haze. And what it was was a, a sulfur-rich gas. It was basically just a lot of gas coming out of Lockheed, coming out of those rents in the ground, being carried thousands of kilometers across the ocean. And it spread all the way across the continent. There were reports of this of this fog, you know, far away, I mean, places like Lisbon and beyond. What were some of the impacts of that fog? 
people got sick. Um, a lot of people started to die in places like, like France and elsewhere. Th there's amazing historical records of the response to this strange fog as it spread across the countryside. So again, there's naturalists talking about how it withered their plants. There are priests in remote corners of France who talk about how people breathing in this haze had trouble breathing and choking and they ended up dying. Longer term, you ended up having climatic effects. So for the first couple of months, basically you had this weird haze show up. And then what happened was it started to change the climate. So the haze was made of these sulfur particles and they start to reflect sunlight back into space. And so as we moved from the summer of 1783, when the fog started to roll across the countryside, into the winter of 1783 and the, and the spring of 1784, things started to get really cold across Europe. It was bitterly cold. You had rivers freezing that normally didn't freeze. Um, we found some great stories of, you know, Mozart was in Vienna complaining to his father about how darn cold it was that winter. And later, people realized this was because, because of Lockheed Hayes. Boy, well, you take it further than that, and you say that it went beyond Europe and actually... Yeah, I think that created what's called the, uh, the year with no summer in North America. 1734, something like that. Okay, so I managed to get four different uh, voltage levels, uh, li uh, input uh, line type voltage levels. Um, and out of that, I got four different B pluses and I got different currents. I can just to show you what I did. I just wrote it all down on here. Um, you know, it looks like I can just take the uh, cathode here and just keep pushing the resistance up higher and higher until finally I drive the current down to that uh, 17 range. But the uh, B plus is, I'm reading it at uh, 530. That meter's not as accurate as maybe it could be, but 530 is definitely off that chart. And, uh, well, what can I say? I mean, this thing must have been running with six V6s in it for four years, perhaps. I don't know. Interesting that the sound, uh, it doesn't seem to make much difference to the sound that you're putting through the air. Uh, with all these rather dramatic changes in uh, current and, and the like. I find that a little bit surprising. Now, we're not driving it that hard. Um, I think I'm moving up and down the characteristic curve of the uh, tube, and as long as I'm not uh, driving it too far up and down the curve, um, there's room for that. I think that's what's happening. If, if, on the other hand, I really put a stronger input into it, or I turn up the volume, rather, either way, um, I could find out that, yeah, when I have the line voltage at 80 volts, there's there's a problem getting this uh, amplifier to perform. I'd have to imagine that. So, that's the end of my experiment here. And, uh, I'm going to go think about it a little more.